I will discuss it, I'll project it when I can. Um, so what we're gonna cover today, we're gonna cover the adjustments. So at the end of um, each financial period, the company has to do certain adjustments to take care of certain transactions. So what they will do is they will, because remember that the reporting period is always 12 months. Um, there is an accounting period. So when, when, it, when it's nearing the end, they will then now do some adjustments to make sure that their financial statement present what, or actually give information of what they're supposed to. So this, in this example, you were given adjustments and in, an, in the information that I was going to um, share, where we just gave you different types of adjustments. It's not exhaustive, but it's different. It's examples of what is it that you can adjust. What is it that can happen before the end of the year that needs an adjustment? Because for example, they don't do depreciation on monthly basis, things like that. They do depreciate at the end of the year because the companies, they, 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 they depreciate um, their assets annually. So they normally do the depreciation at the end of the year. So by the time you do your financial statements, um, before they go to audit, before you, 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 you close off everything, the company will then pull out their trial balance, depending on what they are doing and what they are using. They can use a software, whatever software that they are using that can pull out their trial balance. But they pull out the trial balance on a certain time of the year, nearing the year end. They then adjust for those few months that is remaining. So there are a few things that you need to consider when you're doing adjustments. Um, one of the examples that, or, or some of the examples that we, we were going to project, I gave a list of things like you can have a prepaid expense. A prepaid expense is an expense that has been paid. Uh, in a current year or in a current current financial period, but that expense or part of it is related to the future. So you can have that 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 expense. So it's important then to know how to deal with that expense. You can pay um, something like rent. You find that so you you can sorry um, yes you can pay the rent. That's prepaid expense. You pay the rent wherever you are renting. You are paying a rent maybe for um, 13 months instead of 12 months. So when you pay 13 months, according to the principles of accounting, you suppose only to report the 12 months, not the 13 months, because the 13 months relates to the next financial period. So when you are reporting that 13 months, when you are reporting that 12 months, you then now have to adjust the amount that you've received because you've already received it. Um, so, okay, you can, you can, I, I can see now my, my colleague has included what I'm talking about in the chat. You can double click on the chat on whatever that she has shared, and then you can see so that you can see what I'm talking about, because we've prepared a certain document. Um, I will see as well if I can open it from the chat, but I'll, however, you can open it from the chat while I'm talking. So, so if you pay the rent, you paid for 13 months, you will then have to adjust it. You cannot be reporting the 13 months because you're supposed to be reporting for 12 months. So you adjust for the other month. When you adjust for that other month, it is um, okay. Let me see if I can share what I've opened now. If I'm still struggling, then I will. But however, we have added that information on the chat. You can click on the chat and see what I'm talking about so that when I'm talking, you can see what, 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 what is in there. So 
So you paid, or I was still the debt, you paid for 13 months, but you need to be reporting for 12 months. So as you're reporting for 12 months, the other one then, it becomes your prepaid expense. When you have a prepaid expense, you will have to reduce that expense because it means whatever amount that is showing on your child balance, it is for 13 months. You will have to make it that that, that amount must be 12 months. You have to reduce then the expense. When you reduce the expense, remember expense, they, they increase on the debit side. If you're increasing the expense, you debit them. But if you're reducing, you do credit the expense. So you'll have to credit the rent, as I'm talking about, and debit then a prepaid rent. That prepaid rent, these people, they owe you. You are creating an asset. Because they now owe you money. So the people that owes you money, they're, like, they're, like, they're your debtors. So that's why this amount will then be added in your accounts receivables because it is part of the money that people owe you money. Hence, you then debit the prepaid rent and then credit the rent paid. Does it make sense? What I'm talking about? You have it on the chart, the document I'm talking about. Please make sure that you click on it when I'm talking, when, 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 as I'm sharing it. And the same thing as um, the other type of the expense, that the other type of, you can have then an expense that is outstanding. You find that ele your electricity, normally remember that, you, let, let's assume your year end is 31 December, and the municipality will bill you on the 31st of December. So that is not yet. Uh, be it, it's billed. You will not wait until the 31st or something because you'd have done the closing. So you find that as you are billing, you're only going to be paying later. So it remains outstanding by year end because you have not paid that electricity. So there is then accrued expense. Accrued expense is an expense that is outstanding by year end. So if electricity, you are supposed to pay for it for 12 months, but you've only paid for 11 months because you have not received the bill for December by the year and you have not paid at that particular time when you were doing your financial statements. It means then the electricity amount that is showing in your trial balance, it is for 11 months. But remember, you must always report 12 months. So you must always report for 12 months. So as you are only reporting, um, as, as you, you only receive the amount for 11 months, you will have to add then that one. So you increase your electricity. In this example, you had the rent, it's still the same thing, but you, you increase the electricity. Expenses, they increase on the debit side. You debit electricity and you credit accrued expense. That's accrued rent. This one is a liability. It's outstanding. You are owing electricity. However, it, it, it has accrued. You've used it. For the fact that you have used it, you are owing it. It has accrued to you. That is why you then include it in your financial statements. You're going to debit your electricity and credit your accrued expense. So that is how you deal with an expense, the prepaid one and the accrued one. And you can have um, another with debt and expense, you can come to an income. In an income as well, you can receive an income in advance. So when the income is, is coming to you in advance, so you receive an income commission, you're receiving it for, or let's say interest received, you're receiving it for 13 months. So the other one month you've received in advance is for the next financial period. Income increases on the credit side. But this time, you have to decrease that, 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 that interest um, received because it is for 13 months in your financial statements. You must make it 12 months. That is why you must minus that one month. When you are reducing an income, you will debit it. When you are reducing an income, you debit it because it increases on the credit side. You then now going to debit the interest income and credit income in advance. This income in advance, you are owing it because 
Um, it's not yet yours in a way. So you received it. It's not yet accrued because you have not uh, received it. So you will then credit income in advance. You come to income received in advance is an income that has been received during the current financial year, but related to the future period. We wrote that information new. Only the portion related to the current year, it must be recorded as income. The adjustment is necessary. And you have accrued income. Accrued income, um, you only received it for less than 12 months. As you received it, received it for less than 12 months, they owe you then um, because you have not received it. So, but you need to account for it because you need to account for 12 months. Hence, if, for example, you were supposed to receive the commission for 12 months, but you only receive it for 11 months, you must then, for that one month, have the accrued income. So, because this one, you must increase the, your income um, from 11 to 12 months, you're going to credit the income. Since income increases on the credit side, you then now going to debit the accrued income. Um, I want to come to the other one, the, 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 the consumable invent on hand. Consumables are all expenses with, um, with regard to inventory bought not for sale, but for use in the process of earning income. For example, the stationary packaging material, there will be physical inventory left at the end of the financial year that can be accounted for. Then the closing amount can be determined. So that is where then, if you have the consumable stores on hand, that is 500 rand, you gonna debit your consumable inventory and then credit your consumables as an expense. Um, you have another item that is credit losses. That is your bad debts. So your bad debts is those um, people that did not pay. You sold your goods on credit to debtors. And the debtors that did not pay, you had to write off the amount for whatever reason. It does not matter what the reason. As soon as they say you're writing off that amount, there is a bad debt. So remember, that amount is sitting in your debtors. When I sell on credit, I say this debtor owes me 1,000 rand. I would have debited debtors or account receivables or trade receivables and credited whatever that you know, was credited the sales as I was selling. So you are sitting with the debtors of a thousand rand. But if they can't pay, you are writing it off. It means that you must take it out from the debtors. It was debited when you created it. You have to credit it now to take it out. So it must cancel out. When you are selling on credit, you debited the, 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 the accounts receivables or trade receivables, and you credited the sale. So now as you are writing it off, you have to now to credit so that you cancel it out. And you create an expense because you're not going to receive it. That is called credit losses. So you're debiting an expense that is called credit losses and credit your trade receivable. One last transaction. Um, this is not, this is not by all means like exhaustive, but it is mostly some of the adjustments that you encounter. So there is depreciation. As I've said that you have the property plant and equipment um, that, you, that, that, that you own is depreciated over, you'll be given what is the depreciation. They will tell you how is it depreciated. You can just go and check how to calculate depreciation. So as the assets, as you're using them, they're losing value. That's what the depreciation means. So they're losing value. Also, it, it is another way of expensing that because if you buy an asset for a million and you take that asset and expense it immediately, your financial statements will have a shock because you might report a loss. So what they do is they allow you, SARS allows you to split it maybe over five years, depending Sometimes they say 20%, five years. They can give in a number of years. 
they can give in a percentage. They can say 20% per annum. So if it's 20% per annum, it means it's going to be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So it's going to be like five times or five years consecutively. So they allow you then to expense it. How do you expense that asset? By depreciation. So you will be taking that 20% to an expense. The next year, 20% to an expense. The next year, 20% until your asset, it has zero value. Because as you are using it, it loses value. You know that when you buy, when, when the only thing that appreciates its building. But most any other assets, most assets, they lose value. You buy a vehicle, as you are buying, as you are using it, you know as well you're owning the car. The, when you bought the car, do you know what, when you buy a car, immediately you drive out of the gate of the dealer. It has lost value. When you can reverse back and say, I'm selling it, you'll, you'll get a lesser amount because it has lost value. That's how those things work. So they then now have a term, the prescription that is prescribed by, the, by SARS to say, this type of assets, you use this, this formula. It's over five years. This one is over three years. Like the, the laptops, over three years. You know, all those. You will get that from... from but also the management, sometimes they can look into the discretion and look, you know what, there they, they, they are situations where it clashes the SARS one with uh, the accounting one. That is why when you are continuing to, with, 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 with accounting, you will be able to compare what the SARS says and what the depreciation says so that it will have the timing differences and the deferred tax. So that's not on your scope for now. But for now, just know that you have to depreciate an asset because it loses value. So that's a loss of value. When you depreciate an asset, you will then debit the depreciation and credit accumulated depreciation. That is the depreciation. Cool, are you sorted? Um, Mercosa, thank you. Thank you for the pre presentation. Um, let's, let's hear from them. Um, the students, if if they have questions. Anyone that has a question before we continue to the question? Because then when you go to the question, um, we'll have to analyze this. We did sort of the analysis first. So who's sharing for me? I am. I was just about to ask if everyone can see the screen now. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, awesome. Coolio, coolio, coolio. Happiness. Um, please go to the next sheet. Okay. The question. Okay. Okay. This is what this is what you are given. You are given a pre-adjustment trial balance as at the end of 31st um, December 2021. And you are given then adjustments. So So what you're gonna do, we're gonna analyze. As you're gonna see, as, as, as you are seeing there, I said the type. So you are given all these transactions. They separated them for you. You can see from the sales down that a nominal section, that's your income and expenses. But from capital until until allowances for credit losses, that is your that is your that is that is your balance sheet section. It's not always. Uh, as easy as this, but however, most of the time they're giving it to you. So this is the information that you are given. You then now gonna go to the transactions. What you're gonna do first, we don't gonna start with the solution. We're gonna analyze each and every transaction. You will tell me that what has happened on this transaction. So when you check the first one, this is um, they say packaging material on hand on 31 December 2021. 
20.0, that is 980. So the type of that transaction, before we analyze it, what is this? This one is an inventory on hand. There is the packaging material that is on hand, which means an inventory on hand. So what you do when you are reading it, as you are seeing, we're going to analyze first before we go to the solution. Analyze each and every question what it is, and then we're going to go to the calculation and then go then to the solution on what we did. Then the second one, um, oh, let's do the calculation at the same time. Go to invent on hand. It, on that one, it's just 980. There's nothing that needs to be calculated. That's what you are given. You are given the value as 980. Then the next one, long-term borrowing was entered into on 1 October 20.1. The dates are important. Very underline your dates. It's 1 October 20.1. When is your year end? When is your year end? Because there is very, yes, can you see? Your year end is then 31 December 20.1. So the dates are very, very important. Let know the dates so that you'll be able to calculate. On this question, we borrowed the long-term borrowing was entered into 1 October. According to agreement, interest payable by annually. If it's payable by annually, which means um, it's October, November, December, January, February, March. Right? So just right, just just I think I think right there the thing the before before we write the accrued expense before we write the accrued expense write the the term as well so it's from it's October remember it's the first of October and it's paid by it annually if it's paid by it annually it's paid like twice so it's gonna be October the first installment or the first amount that that you've received it's one October up until no 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 it's one October. November, December, January, February, March. Just write first and yeah. Okay. But what they're saying is here, I want you to look at this. This transaction. It can go either way because you have to go up there and see if you see any interest on loan. Are you seeing any interest on loan? Are you seeing any interest on loan, guys? So this is very important because it will tell you how to treat this transaction. If it's not there, it means then it is not yet paid. Hence, then you just have to account for October, November, December only. If you, if if there was an amount for interest on loan, it was gonna mean you've received it for six months, so it was gonna be prepaid. But this time, since you don't see anything when you check your 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 your, 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 your transactions, you can. <coughs> <clears throat> so you can see they sells wages, everything and whatever. There is no interest on loan. It means then you have to do only October to December. Does it make sense? Are you understanding this? Because they can they can do this, but you find that they gave it the amount. You can get the same the same question, but find that you had you are now then given the amount for interest. If you are given, it will means it will mean that they gave you interest for six months. But since you are not given, it means is what it's a crude expense. And how is gonna be the calculation? The calculation. Um, how much was the loan? You go back to information. It was there is the long term loan. It was 20, 25,000 that you took. 
you come down here, they told you that is 18% is 25,000 times 18%. Then remember, it's for what? October, November, December. For three months, because your year end is when? It's December. I think you can just take, do, do something on that, Tisha, on that uh, October to, to March. You can, yeah. Yes. So that is what, that is what is your calculation. Then you come to the next transaction. Um, advertisement includes an amount of 400 paid for January 20.2. What happened here? When is your year end? Date, guys. Date. I want you to remember, even when you are when you are writing your science assignment with assessment that I said dates are important. This is paid for January. When is my year end? 31st December 20x1. What does this mean? It means then it was a prepaid expense. Dates are very important. So this was a prepaid expense. You are given, there is no calculation, it's 400 rand. Rachel, if I can maybe just interrupt, I'm just looking at the messages on the side as we go. Okay. Um, there's a question here that just asks if we can please show the calculation again for the, for the interest on loan. I just want to see if I can. Um... Okay, firstly, what was the loan amount? The loan amount was 25,000. I think make it a bit bigger. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. There we go. Okay, so let's do the calculation again. So it's 25,000, and then they said at 18% per annum, you multiply it by 18 over 100. It's 18%, and then you multiply it by three months because it's October. Remember, it's the 1st of October. It means you must count October then. It's October, November, December. So read again. They said the agreement was entered in the 1st of October. And that by annually was just there to confuse you for this one. However, it can work on the other question. That's why I started with that as well. So it's October because it's the 1st of October, November, December. I saw a hand. I'm not sure if it's that person that has asked the question that is now understanding. Uh, there is no hands now. I think yeah. now we just, just want to also clarify there's a question just with regards to the year end. Um, maybe we just clarify that again. So as you guys can see, the, the pre-adjustment trial balance that we have is basically shows us that it's as at the 31st of December 20.1. So that means our financial year would be from January 20.1 to December 20.1. Yes, yes. You can go down again to the required because the pre-adjustment trial balance, they can do it for any other time. Go down to the required. No, 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 just scroll up. Or oh, they did not write the date. I think the question had no dates. However, it, they, they, they normally tell you that you're do this or the year end is 31st December, but he, as Tisha has explained it. I'm not sure if it's clear now. Can we continue? Okay, there's one more question um, with regards to the accrued expense. So the question is, is it an accrued expense because it was only supposed to be paid the next year? What is accrued expense first? Accrued expense is an expense that you are entitled to. You've used that. You, If it's a rent, you stayed in my property. If it's electricity, you use my electricity, but you are owing. It's not yet paid. It's an outstanding expense. Okay. Yeah, then that, there's that. I, I think you can open the the... Uh, the one that is asking, you can open because we did share this Excel. You can open that Excel and, and read it if then you still um, need more 
explanation. I think we are done with uh, prepared and accrued expense. Um, the one that is for next year, it's prepaid expense. Because it's paid. Uh, and it's for the next financial period. So it must not be part of this year. That's why we're taking it out as prepaid expense. You will see when we do the journal, because Tisha will do the journals. Tisha's going to do the journals now. Okay, we come to the next one. Rental income includes an amount. This is rental income. They said includes amount in respect of January 20.2. What does that mean? Already, if it includes amount for January, it means then it's paid for 13 months because the 12 months end when? 31st December 20.1. But if it includes an amount for January, it means whatever rent that you are seeing is for 13 months. So this is what? This is income received in advance. So as it's received in advance, so you have to check on this one. Can you see you are given an in an 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 a rental income? I think it's fifteen thousand six hundred. That it means then it is for thirteen months. So you must then calculate the one month. How do you calculate the one month? You take fifteen thousand six hundred uh, equal to fifteen thousand six hundred divided by thirteen. I hope it's clear. There are a few answers already giving us the amount of 1,200. So it looks like it. That's cool. You are welcome to calculate on the charts. Let's go to the next one. Insurance includes an amount. Did I miss something? Uh, interest, interest on fixed deposit has not yet been received for the last two months. Before you even calculate, if it has not yet been received, it was supposed to be received for 12 months, but it has not yet been received. So which means whatever that is received is for 10 months then. It is what? It is still outstanding. And this one is an interest on fixed deposit. Remember fixed deposit, interest on fixed deposit will be an income because it's you that making a, 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 a thing, um, um, a, 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 you fixing an amount. So it is like an invest, it's an investment. So you're supposed to be receiving an interest and we have not received it for two months. So this is what then accrued income. It is outstanding for two months. Then it is accrued income. You then now have to calculate it. What is the fixed deposit? You go and check what is the fixed deposit. How much was the fixed deposit? To go and find the fixed deposit, it was 50,000. And what did they say is the interest? Go down there now. They said interest is calculated at 12% per annum. So your fixed deposit is 50,000 multiplied by 12%, that is 12 over 100. But remember, it's only two months that we have not received. It means it's two out of 12 months. Give me thumbs up. Are you okay? Coolio. Then let's come to insurance. Includes an amount of 750 paid for the period 1 November to 31 October 20.2. So this was an insurance um, of an amount of 750 paid for the period. It is for the period of 1 November to 31 October. This is how many months? It's November, because it's the first November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. <coughs> but, <coughs> sorry, remember our year end. So this insurance is paid for what? 
for um is paid for 12 months but we suppose only to receive november and december we must only receive what two months so our amount that we supposed to be paid not to sorry guys our amount that that um it, it's only two months that we are supposed to pay but you ended up paying what 12 months so which means we prepaid 10 months are you getting it our current year, it's only November and December, but we paid until October. So which means there is 10 months that is prepaid that we must take it out of 750. So it is a prepaid expense. We're gonna say 750 multiplied by 10 over 12 months. That is what, that is the 10 months that is prepaid. And we come to telephone account. Telephone account is just 165, not yet been paid. So this is the accrued expense because it is outstanding, it's not yet paid. The expense that is not yet paid, it becomes an accrued expense. There is no calculation, it's just 165. Then um, equipment. So the equipment, um, there will be two calculations here. They said on that on 2.8, they said equipment 2000 cost price was purchased on 1 July 20.1. Because we are still doing the calculation, we're going to have the equipment that is new. This one was purchased when? On 1 July. So we kept this equipment from July, August, September, October, November, December. We only used it for six months. It has lost value. That is six months. We have to calculate the depreciation for it for six months. So how much is it? It's going to be 2000 Then they said, Oh, okay, we have not read other information. So for now, I think let's leave it. We're going to do the calculation when we get to, to the other one down because we need to get the percentage on how is it depreciated. So let's go to, uh, let's do 5.9. We're going to come back to vehicle. Let's do equipment. So for equipment, what is important is sometimes you will be given um, an equipment that say depreciated. The method is you must always separate it. Calculate the depreciation for the equipment that is new. If there is one that is sold, calculate the depreciation for the equipment that is sold. And you calculate the, 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 the depreciation for the equipment that is old that you had it before you buy or before you sell. Or the remain, or we do, sometimes they say it's the remaining. So on this one, they then now said um, they gave information that the equipment is 10% per annum on diminishing balance method. That this one is still new, the 2000 rand one. So we will be able to take just 2000 rand times 10% over six months. There are different methods of calculating. If you are calculating on straight line or cost price, you just calculating it straight as you take the amount times by whatever percentage. But remember, on this calculation, there is the 100 rand. Remember the six months. Remember, guys, the six months is 2,000 times 10% times 6 over 12. Looks okay so far in the chat. Please, guys, um, just post your questions as we go, and we'll we'll address them. Okay. Can can we jump? I want us to do the equipment so that they will understand. I do not do the vehicle before we do the equipment. Let's jump to do the equipment, the other one. So you calculated the new one, but remember there was an equipment that was there already that must be depreciated. 
don't forget about it. Sometimes they don't tell you. It's here. They did not tell you that you must not forget to depreciate the equipment that you had. Hence, I'm telling you that depreciation, new, depreciation, sold, depreciation, old, or remaining if you have sold it. Because the sold, you must take out the sold one if you are selling it. And then whatever that is remaining, you still have to depreciate it. So, if it's, if, if it's cost price or straight line, you just take the cost price of the equipment. That was what? Um, is it 9,000? 9, 9,000 times by the percentage. But they said it's diminishing balance method. If it's diminishing balance method, it is calculated on carrying value. So you take the cost of the equipment minus accumulated depreciation before you calculate. So you take 9,000 minus what was the accumulated depreciation of this equipment? Um, it was 1710 minus 1710. And then minus, remember, there's another thing that, 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 that I did not say as well. Dates are important. Dates are important. Dates, I'm saying it again. You are given this child balance. You are given until 31st December. So for the fact that the equipment was bought on, 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 on there was one equipment that was bought in July. It means it's included in the cost price of that 9,000 Rand because you are given the balances at 31st December unless stated otherwise. They will tell you if there's a different balance. That is why you minus, you first take out the, 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 the equipment that was that you purchased because we want the old one. So in this 9,000, there is that 2,000 Rand that's a new equipment. Take it out. We want to calculate the depreciation. The new must be calculated separate. That's why we're taking out that 2,000. And then the old must be calculated separate. You then now times by 10%. This one has been there for the whole year. That's why we just say times by 10%. You're not approaching it because it's been there for the whole year. Any question on this depreciation? It's just a question on the 100 Rand on the new equipment. Okay, what is the question about it? How did we get to the 100 Rand for the depreciation on the new equipment? Okay, I think we can go back, put up the formula. So that we said 2000 times the 10%, that is the depreciation because 10% per annum times by six over 12 months because it was we only had this equipment from July until December. So which means we only had it for six months. That is how we got the 100 rand. Thumbs up, are you with me? Yes, all good. Cool, 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 yo. Then we did the old, let's get to the vehicle. The vehicle as well. There was no vehicle purchased, there was no vehicle sold, so, which means this one is just the old one that we had. So, it's just the depreciation on vehicle. Depreciation on vehicle. Um, it's also on diminishing balance method. If it's diminishing balance method, before you calculate, you take your cost price. There was 40,000 minus your accumulated depreciation. There is 11,200. Then you calculate on the carrying amount. Okay, maybe if we just stop for a second, Rachel, if that's okay, I'm just reading the messages. Um, there is a message. I just want to see. I feel like if you just do this. Okay, there's a question that asks, if the 10% comes after the new, how will we know to use it in both cases of the old equipment and the new equipment? It is just a depreciation on equipment. Other new old so. Yeah, just ten percent on the diminishing balance. So it's on all equipment, whether it's new or old, or if nothing was bought during the year, it would be on the full value. Yes. You remember what I said? Well, you remember what we said about equipment on that note? We said we said that you bought an equipment for forty thousand rand. 
So they saying then you can de depreciate it at 10% per annum. So which means it's going to be depreciated over 10 years. So this 40,000, you're going to be splitting it, expensing it over 10 years. But you are using a diminishing balance method. So before you calculate the new depreciation, you must take out the depreciation that was calculated previously first before you calculate the new one. That's a diminishing balance method. But the 10% is just on equipment. It's not on old or new. It's just it's 10% on equipment. Yeah, and there's, I think there seems to be a little bit confusion with regards to the depreciation on the equipment. So maybe um, there is a question here just asking if the 529 is the depreciation on the old equipment. That is correct. Because yes. in this formula, if you guys recall, we took the full value, which was the 9,000, as it showed above. If we just go back, the 9,000 Rand was the value at the end of the year, which means that it included the 2,000 that was bought. So we took that, we minus the 2,000 to take that out because we calculated the depreciation separately for the new equipment. Yes. And then we minus the accumulated depreciation, which is the 1710 because it's on the diminishing balance method. And that amount then we multiplied by 10%. So the depreciation for the old equipment would be 529 Rand. The depreciation for the new equipment would be 100 Rand. So in total for equipment, the depreciation would be the sum of the two. So 629 for equipment. We okay. just separated the calcs because we got a clear um, note here that there was a new one and an old one. Alternatively, you guys could do it together, but I think it just complicates it a little bit, so it's easier to keep it separate. So keep it separate, three of them. Do the new, do the sold, do the remaining after the sold. So you must always keep them separate. Okay, let's come to the vehicle. Vehicle, I think we did spoke about it. It's 40,000 minus 11,200. It's 40,000 minus 11,200. And the percentage is 20%. So it's on all vehicles. Even if you can buy another one, it will be 20%. The one that you are selling, it will be 20%. Thumbs up. Can we continue? Thank you. Um, there okay. is just, sorry, Rachel. The okay. messages are coming in quickly, so I'm struggling to keep up with them. but. Um, so there's a question on the new equipment again. So the new equipment does not have accumulated depreciation. No, because it's just been bought now. But the next year, it will it, the, the next year the depreciation remember it will be included. The new one that is 2000 that is bought now it does not have it as yet because it has not depreciated. It's the first time we're depreciating. Remember what is the accumulated depreciation? Is the depreciation that is accumulated. As we are depreciating it, we keep on adding it to, a, to, to accumulated depreciation. And I, just to also add, it's clear in the, in the information provided for equipment, it gives you the cost price at the 31st of December. So we can assume that the 2000 is included in here. However, on the accumulated depreciation, it does state the accumulated depreciation is at the beginning of the year, first of the first. So this tells you that this 1,700 is only on the old equipment and there's no accumulated depreciation on the new equipment. Okay, I have a request to repeat on repeat the vehicles. That's the one. And another one, um, how would this calculation work if we were using the straight balance method? Okay, can you repeat that? We must repeat on a vehicle. Yeah, so I think maybe we can answer the question, how would we, it be calculated if we use the straight balance method instead of the diminishing balance? Okay, you just take the cost price times 10% if it's equipment. If it's vehicle, you take 40,000 times 20%. That's it. 
Okay. Um, I'm just going to do it quickly here, just on the side for those. So straight balance method, if we use vehicles as the example, um, we said that the vehicle's cost price is 40,000. In when when we look at the straight balance method, the accumulated depreciation does not feature in the calculation. That's what Rachel just mentioned. So it's as simple as saying the 40,000 multiplied by the 20% for vehicles, that would be the depreciation for vehicles. And then for equipment, we would have two. Um, if we say new equipment, maybe first, and then the old equipment, just to keep it separate, what it would be, it would mean that the new equipment we know is 2,000 Rand. Now we just multiply it by the percentage, but still over the time period, right? Because it was only for six months, so we still have to apportion it. The old equipment would then be, we said it was 9,000 minus the 2,000, now you don't consider the accumulated depreciation at all, you just multiply it by 10%. So that would be the difference if it was on the straight balance method. Hope that's answered that question. Thumbs up, okay, cool. Then we come to 2.10, the account of losses. Um, the account of loose ends LTD, a debtor who owes 200 rand must be written off as recoverable. Remember what I said is when we were selling it to them, we debited debtors in credited sales. So now because we are reducing, we just this is just the um, the bad debts, bad debts or credit losses. Then it's 200 rand. So um, Tisha will explain the journal. Then it was determined that on 31st December 20.1, the allowance on credit losses should, should amount to 250. If it must be 250, how much it was before? So it was 300 rand. Their allowance for credit losses, it was 300 rand, so they are reducing it to 250. So there is allowance for credit losses. Um, it's 300 rand minus 250. Then you'll see how the journal is done right now. After this, we then now gonna do the journal. This is just an explanation. We did not want to share that to share the journals first and explain the solution without you understanding that like step by step on what is this and what is the channel so and what is the calculation what is that you are doing then we can go then now to journal okay there's a few more questions which i think we must just look at quick before we continue with the journals um okay. i think the first question okay can can we please type the calculation for the new equipment on the straight balance method to get to 100 Rand. So that's this one here. So I'll just do it in the, um, as I share now. So the new equipment we said was 2000 Rand. 10% is the straight balance um, depreciation write-off, but it's still six months. So whether you use the straight, the straight balance method or the diminishing balance, if it's only for a portion of the year, we still have to apportion it. So irrespective of which method we're using, this, this asset was only bought in July, so you still only calculate it for half the year. Okay, then the next question um, re relates to, just wanna go through it again, why are we deducting 2000 for the new asset? So I think we mentioned it a little, um, yeah, so on the equipment, the cost price is at the 31st of December, which means the 9,000 here is both the value for the old equipment as well as the new equipment, because the new equipment was bought in July. 
So when we calculated the depreciation, we just wanted to split the old equipment and the new equipment. So if we split out that 9,000, we have the old equipment, which we had for, let's say, 12 months, Jan to December. And then we had the new equipment, which we only had for six months. Yes. So the new equipment was for six months, and we knew that the cost price is 2000 because they, they gave us that information at the bottom. So, and here at the top, we have the full value is 9000 so we then say the old equipment has to be 9,000 minus the 2,000. That would be the calculation for the old equipment in order to calculate the depreciation. Okay, I think let's just see if there's anything else that's come up in the meanwhile. Okay, there's also a request to explain the last entry again. Okay, I'm assuming that we are referring to this one on the allowance for credit losses. Um, okay, there's a few more questions, so let's just go through that one first. Okay, so with regards to the allowance for credit losses, um, in the required here, it says that it was determined that at the 31st of December, the allowance for credit losses should be 250 Rand. So they're telling us that at year end, the, the closing balance should be 250 Rand. If we go up to the information provided in the pre-adjustment trial balance, you'll see on line 21, there is an allowance for credit losses already showing as 300. So basically, they are saying that the value that we have here is too high. It's 300. It should be 250. So that is why we calculated the 50 Rand by saying the opening balance is 300. The closing balance is now 250. So the journal would be the 50. Okay. Um, I think. I think we are done. Yeah, there's a few more questions that come up. I think, okay, so I think the question was actually not with regards to the amount, but to rather repeat, okay, how we calculated the credit losses. I hope that's answered the question now. If you guys can maybe just give a thumbs up if the explanation of the 300 minus the 250 now answers the question on allowance for credit losses. I see a hand that's raised and a thumbs up, so I'm guessing that's correct. Maybe just um, you guys can put your hands up, but maybe if you can type your message rather because we can't um, unmute all of you guys um, okay. at once. So it's easier if you just type the message and I will go through it on the side as we are as we go through it. Okay. Ben, let me just check the chart so that I can check while we are. I think you can then now do to the to go to the journals. Okay. Okay, thanks, Rachel. So what we will now look at is the real, the required in this question. So just for some of you that have asked, um, this is learning unit six that we are looking at. And the question is the e-tutor question in learning unit six. That's what we are currently looking at. So you guys can refer to this as well in your study material um, afterwards. And we can also share this Excel file. So the required actually then asked us to prepare the journal entries. And what we thought would be important, as Rachel mentioned, um, it's hard to show you guys what the journal entries are without going through each line item and understanding what is the type of adjustment that's being made and to al actually calculate the amount. Because in order to prepare the journals, you would need to first understand what type, what are we dealing with in each section? Is it an accrued expense versus a prepaid expense? How much, or what is the amount that we need to have in the journal entry? And then the debit or credit is then usually the last part, which then should be the easiest section, because now you've already determined what the type and the amount is, and the type, or adjustment type then tells you what it what the journal should be. So because we weren't able to share earlier when Rachel was explaining, I will maybe just go back here for a minute or two. 
um, if that's okay for you guys. And what we did here was we summarized the learning unit for you guys. So everything we've now just discussed, the different types of um, adjustments, we've summarized it here with a description explaining, what, which is what Rachel took you guys through as we went through the process. And we also then put an example with the debits and credits. So this helps as well now for us to be able to determine the debits and credits. So for a prepaid expense, the because you've paid in advance, um, you've already paid it in advance, you would normally then debit the prepaid rent and credit rent. So just as an example. So what we'll do now is go through each of them and then we can look at the debits and credits. Okay. So if we look at the first one, which is inventory on hand. So this one is quite simple, packaging material on hand at the end of the year. So inventory on hand from the previous learning units, you guys would know inventory is an asset. So an asset normally has, if I can maybe just explain it here first, an asset has both a debit and a credit. If it's a debit, it's positive. So it's um, that. Do it like that. It's a positive. That means it's a benefit. And if it's a credit, it's then a negative. Okay. So that's how assets work. And maybe if I can just do this while we are busy. Um, I'm sort of just quickly trying to draw you guys T account, sorry for doing that in the session, but I'm hoping it will help make our process a little bit easier. Okay, so that's on assets. Um, and then inventory is an asset. So it, on here, it's clear we are increasing the value of inventory. So we need to record the inventory as an asset. So it would mean the debit would be to inventory. So debit inventory, which is an asset, and the credit would then go to where it sits, which is packaging material, which is then in the, in the bottom of the section, which sits in here under the, the incomes and expenses. Okay, if we look at the next one, accrued expense, so an accrued expense is something that we need to if we go back here let's look at it again it relates to the current year it's not yet paid so if it's not yet paid it's saying we owe somebody something so it's a liability so it's the opposite of an asset so if we put that maybe here and we say liability or we can call it um, trade payable maybe is another way to explain a liability. Liability is the opposite of an asset, right? So if, the li if you owe somebody something and you need to pay, the credit is increasing it and the debit is reducing it. So if we look at the accrued expense here, which is a liability that we need to now record, record this interest that we hadn't yet recorded. It would make sense that we debit the interest on loan as an expense and we then credit the accrued expense which is a liability. Okay, the next one is a prepaid expense. So prepaid expense, if we go back here, prepaid expense, we've paid it in advance. If we have paid it in advance for the future period, that would be an asset to us because we've paid it in advance and it would be according to this. So because we've paid it in advance, we would have to debit prepaid expense because we are increasing our asset. Increasing our asset is on the debit side, positive meaning increasing. Maybe in brackets here, I should say increase 
and in brackets here, I should say decrease, just so it also just provides a little bit of clarity. So positive is always an increase and a negative would always be a decrease. Okay, so because we are, we've paid it in advance, we're increasing our asset and we then are reducing our expense and it relates to advertis advertisements or advertising. So that would be, we credit the advert advertisement expense. Okay, next one, income received in advance. So income received in advance, if we go back to our summary, Income received in, as, in advance is money we have gotten. So it's income for us and it's received in advance. So it means that we we've received it physically for a future period. And therefore, if you look at income received in advance, we should say credit income received in advance because we are increasing this and debit, this is for rental, so rent income. It's the opposite of what we did when we booked it. So when we booked it, we would have said credit rental income because it was income for us and debit bank. That's what would have happened when we got the money. But now because we received it in advance and we should only account for the transactions during our financial year, and this relates to the new financial year, we have to reverse it. And that is the reason for it being on that side. Then if we look at accrued income, so accrued income, this is interest on fixed deposits. So this is income that we should get that we have not yet received. So if you look at accrued income, it's money we should receive, but it hasn't yet come in. So here it's a receivable because it's an asset money we should receive that we haven't yet received. So here we would increase it on the debit side. So debit accrued income and we would credit interest on investment because that's what this relates to. It's to record the income that we should receive. Okay, the next one is the prepaid expense. So very similar to the top one. Once you've done one of them and doing it this way, you can then easily go back and reference to what happens. When you have a prepaid expense, we said we always debit the prepaid expense and credit um, the topic it relates to. So in this case, we have insurance. So we would debit prepaid expense again. And here, in this case, credit insurance in this example. The next one is an accrued expense. Similarly, we've had an accrued expense up here. We said accrued expenses, we need to, we, it's something we owe or we need to pay. So that means it's a liability and the credit is increasing on this side. So again, we would credit the accrued expense here. And in this case, it relates to the telephone account. So we would debit telephone expenses. Okay, then depreciation. Let's look at all of them together maybe because now the, it's all depreciation. Whether you separate it out or you do it as one is up to you guys to do. But depreciation will always be accounted for as a debit to depreciation, which is an expense, and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Credit to accumulated depreciation falls under here under assets. So here you, we would debit depreciation, the expense, and we would credit accumulated depreciation. And it's always good to just reference which type. So here we have accumulated depreciation for equipment. And below we have the same debit to depreciation here, but the credit would be accumulated depreciation for vehicles. Because you can see as well at the top, if I just reference back up here, we separated out in the information we received, it was separated. So it's good to actually keep it consistent and do the same when you do it here. 
Okay. Um, if we want to also just add the depreciation for the old equipment, it would still be the same. It's still depreciation and it's still credit to equipment because both of these, the 529 would be for the old equipment and the 100 Rand for the new equipment. And then the next one is bad debts or credit allowances. And here is it explained what a, what a bad debt is. So as Rachel mentioned before, we, we receive when we, when, we, um, when we account for the transaction initially, it's a receivable because we are owed money. Now, when we have to write it off because it's now a bad debt and we're not going to receive the money anymore, you would credit your trade receivable and just um, put in the description for loose ends, you know, just so that it's clear, credit trade receivables. That is this one here because we're reducing our asset. It's money that we initially had recorded when we got, when we bought it, or um, sorry, when we did the transaction, we were going to receive it. It was a trade receivable. Now, because we have to write it off, we are no longer going to get that, which is why we credit the trade receivable and we then debit bad debts or credit losses. Um, in this case, the yeah. required refers to credit losses. I, yes. Tisha, can I just help you? There is yes. a question. I think I don't know if it was the old one or what, because they're still talking about the depreciation. So okay. uh, they says, can someone type in the calculation for depreciation on vehicles? I thought it was typed or done. I don't know if it's another question or what. I don't know if it's a different question. I think it's recent from the time. So let's maybe go through it one more time. So for vehicles, we can just go through it. We said vehicles is 20% on the diminishing balance method. And the cost price of vehicles is 40,000. We had no additional information about new vehicles purchased during the year or vehicles sold. So we can assume that this is the, the value that we use. Um, and so how we did the calculation, let me find it again, it's vehicle. So we would have said 40,000, that is the cost of the vehicles multiplied by the 20%, which is the depreciation based on the diminishing balance. And am I doing this right? Depreciation vehicles. Oh, sorry, now I'm doing it on the old method. Diminishing balance method for everyone who's still here and, and, and ready to point out that diminishing balance means you have to reduce your accumulated depreciation first. And that is 11,200. So 40,000 less 11,200 gives you the value that you use to calculate the depreciation. Why? Because it's on the diminishing balance method. So you always have to reduce it by the accumulated depreciation first and then you multiply it by the 20%. And that's how you get to the 5,760. Okay. Okay, that's okay. Then we were looking at bad debts. I think we went through and finalized bad debts. So the debit goes to bad debts and the credit to trade receivables. And the last one is then allowance for credit losses. And what's important that we just remember for, for the allowance for credit losses, we calculated the 50 Rand by saying the balance that we had, the opening balance or the preliminary balance was 300 Rand credit, and the balance should be 250 Rand. So that means we have to reduce the, two, the 300. To, um, to buy 50 Rand in order to give us the 250 Rand. And that then means we have to debit the allowance for credit losses with the 50 and we credit credit losses. That is the income part of it because we are not increasing the allowance. So we're not going from 300 to 350. We're going from 300 to 200. So your credit balance, which is 300, is reducing to 250. And that is why we debit allowance for credit losses to reduce it. And the credit goes to credit losses 
in the income statement, so under the income. Okay, I think that summarizes the question overall um, on learning unit six. Is there potentially any other questions from the group? Um, someone is saying, I think they mean, please write it down. No, as we are writing it down, write down on your paper because it's not in an Excel, not use Excel formula so they can see the method. Unless the person can't see the screen, that could be it. I'm not sure because I see some people are struggling um, to see the screen. It could either be a connection issue or potentially um, you join during the call in and that's the reason. But I, I actually see somebody is already um, typing it, but I can also just type it out quick. So yeah. like we said, the v sorry, just Rachel. It, someone has put it on the chart, 40,000 minus 11 times 20%. Please, the one that says you want to see the formula, just scroll up a bit, it's calculated on the chart. Yes. Yeah. I think we can continue. Okay. Gavin, I see a question about the session going to be shared. So yes, the session is currently being recorded. So when we are done with the session, it will be saved and it will be shared as well on my UNISA for you guys to reference too. Yeah, don't worry, I'm monitoring. Oh, you are, we are done now, we are done. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now we're done, we're just waiting to see if there's any other questions on the chat. Okay, I see some requests to share the Excel. We will share this with the with the lecturers and ask them to include it with the recording. So that should not be an issue to share the Excel. Someone is say when doing someone says when doing the debit and credit to classify, can we use other terms? For example, expense can be trade payable or investment can be capital. Expense being trade payable. What do you mean? Please ask in a, how will the expense become trade payable? Because trade payable is a, it's a credit, it's creditors. Maybe, maybe he means when it's accrued expense. Because when you are taking it to the notes, it goes under trade payables, but I don't think they've covered that yet. Yes. I'm not sure. I, th I think if we understand the question correctly, I think it's Irvin. Um, what would be from if you if you go through the learning units or through the through the module, there's clearly in the summary very specific types of adjustments and with the naming, and that links in at the end of it, whether it's inventory here, it is still an asset or um, prepaid expense is also an asset and um, versus like an accrued, um, accrued expense, which is a liability or a trade payable. It's rather better to currently where you guys are to rather use in order to be clear and not have any misunderstandings or confusion with the terminologies to keep the names clear. If it's a prepaid expense, call it a prepaid expense. And if it um, is a accrued income, refer to it as such instead of saying um, asset or trade payable or trade receivable. Even on the trade receivable here, you can see in the example, I've said trade receivable, but I also purposefully put in loose ends because they're very clear as to which account because it's a specific data that's being referred to. So just to avoid any confusion, it's a trade receivable for specific data. Okay, I see another question. It's just, there's quite a few. Okay, I see somebody asked to explain the straight balance method, but 
thank you to Hein for putting in the, the information there as well. Okay, the, there's another question in terms, okay, the before this, very long. Are the accounts for adjustments only limited to the ones you shared earlier or on the, on the other documents? So, Esi Tumileng, if you guys, when you go through the year learning unit, we've summarized all of the types of adjustments um, at this point in time that you guys are looking at. So, for now, this is all the adjustments that you will that you will be tested on when looking at it. As you guys go through the modules, um, further through the learning units, there would be others potentially that's added, but this is the, the most important ones at this point in time as a, a starting point for the base. Okay, there's a few questions about the classes. Um, is it every day or is it only on a Wednesday? Okay, so just, um, with regards to these classes, so these classes are not every day. I just want to see if I can open a file quick and I can share it with you guys. So on the website, you should be able to access it on the on the MyUNISA website. There is a link that the lecture is shared. Um, I'm just opening it for you guys so I can show it to you. But it's that basically gives the timetable as to when the classes are and what topics will be covered. So it's not only on a Wednesday, it's um, sometimes, for example, there's one this Friday as well. So there's a there's actually a file that has all of it. I will share it now. OK, here it is. OK, so this is the one we are doing currently today you'll see that then on the 16th of August, there's one and it basically gives you the questions that will be covered. So you guys can on the portal on my UNISA go into it and see which ones you'd like to join. They will be presented by different e-tutors. So today was Rachel and myself, um, and we must apologize, I think a little bit in advance, just with regards to the technical issues with sharing um, and being able to speak, but I think we eventually came right. So. Every, every session will be presented by a different group of e-tutors and lecturers. They'll all be recorded and the recordings will be made available. Okay. I see some questions with regards to, I'm failing to open the e-tutor questions on that document. Oh, do you guys mean this? So this, these questions will also be in your learning units, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but normally, if you have it opened in Word, it opens. You just have to have PDF or Acrobat installed. Um, but it does normally open by just simply double clicking on it. If you guys struggle, you can also, and if you don't have access to it, you can always just post a message on your individual groups where you are included to your e-tutors to just ask them to potentially load it. Um, on the portal for you. And yes, that's correct. The link that you guys currently join today, it will be the same link for every class. Just to not um, make it difficult, the same link. And it's usually between six and eight. Rachel, I think there's a question about can it be posted on the WhatsApp group? Don't think that's an issue. Can I see Rachel? Yeah. Yes, yes. The WhatsApp group. Um, which link? This link for class. The links for these for these sessions. I think we should be able to share it because it's one link that will be this that will be for every class. I don't know because there is. I think there's three WhatsApp groups, so we'll ask all the e tutors to share on WhatsApp group. Um, there's others are full. There's one that is not full now. I think Miss Tara will send the link because she's been the one that's sending the link for the WhatsApp group. Um, ours is still not full yet. I don't know it's full when it says how many people. Okay. Is there any other questions we've missed or anything else important? I think we've answered almost all the questions that I've seen.
Okay, there's a message to be added to a WhatsApp group. I think Rachel just clarified um, with regards to the WhatsApp group. There are three of them and it will be coordinated via the lecturers in terms of which links you guys will be sent. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Palesa. There's a link on there to join the group. Yeah. Okay, so I think, Rachel, if we are good, then we could adjourn the meeting. That's okay. I'm good on my side. Okay. I hope you I hope you are okay, guys. Um thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for attending the class. I hope it has helped you. Please make sure that you join the the, the your, your e tutor groups as well and ask questions there. Both are your e tutors. Get information from them, whatever that you are struggling with. Also on WhatsApp, you are also allowed to 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 to, 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 to ask any questions, we are here to help you. There's someone that raised their hand. Please just, I don't, please write down. I don't think you'll be able to talk. Just write down your question, Angelo. Where can we get the tutor groups? The Twitter groups you are located to, you should, if you don't have, send an email to, 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 to my UNISA, my UNISA email, and um, you, should, you should be allocated to the groups. You don't choose. Only the WhatsApp group that you join. Okay. Evening, guys. Enjoy. Thanks, everyone. Keep well. Okay. Bye. Bye.